we'll go ahead and kick things off with the finished product. And what we have here is a cute little orange and white fox engraved onto a canvas that has been spray painted orange and black. And then the power settings configured to burn off specific layers and reveal just what we wanted to for the image. There's three different versions on this canvas and I'll go over that here in just a moment why. This right here is the one that we'll actually be using the settings for in this video. It gives the nice amount of the orange color gives still crisp detail on everything. The reason I have multiple versions is I want to show the difference that came into play just by adjusting your power up or down 1%. So this one that is significantly darker and doesn't show nearly as much orange is 1% less power than this version. And then this version is 1% higher power. So you can see here, it's not quite as vibrant of an orange, especially here along the body and up in the head. It burned off a lot more of the orange paint and reveals a lot more of the white. So it's not nearly as bright and as colorful as you get on this version right here. So with that out of the way, we'll go ahead and dive into the prep work and the settings I use for creating this on my Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser. And hopefully this will be useful for everyone. Our starting point is going to be this very simple 6x6 six six canvas. I bought these on Amazon. I got a pack of 12, really, really inexpensive. So they're kind of a perfect thing for testing and getting started with everything. What we're going to do is we're going to take this outside. We're going to do one layer of an orange. And then we're going to cover that with a layer of black. It's really important when you're doing this to make sure that you let the first layer fully dry following the instructions on your can before you apply the second layer. Otherwise, you're gonna get some weird cracking and bubbles and stuff like that, and it just makes it, the paint look really, really bad. Uh, I'm not gonna bother showing the painting process because it's literally just applying spray paint, an orange layer, and then a black layer. And then we will come back here in a moment and I will show you the prepped canvas. With the layers of paint dry, you can see here, we just have a nice, solid, clean black canvas. Um, you can probably see here on the edge, you can see where the paint, the orange is on there on the bottom first. And it's literally just a solid layer of the orange and then a solid layer of the black. And we are now ready to go and prep our image and then drop this into the laser to get to the end result. So we'll go hop onto the computer and I'll show you processing the image again through image R. We'll start here on imagear.com and we're going to follow the exact same process I did in my previous video for the white tile for the canvas. So we'll come down here to the bottom. We'll select upload a colored image. For this one, I did another AI generated image. This time I had it generate a cute fox, high contrast, no background. You can see it right there. As I did before, I don't really need to resize it. It's already at the dimensions I need, as well as the 318 DPI I need for my Atomstack A5 M50 Pro laser. So I'll leave that the same. For the canvas, just like with the tile, we're gonna use the Norton white tile painted black. So we're gonna go to material, Norton, Norton white tile painted black, hit okay. And you can see that gives us again that nice inverted image with the high scale dithering for the imaging to kind of get us that nice uh, burn through colors. And again, the main reason we do this is because our canvas is white, then with a layer of orange and then black on top. So the areas that were black in the original area, we want them to be white so that none of the black paint is removed. As it kind of gets lower down into the gray areas, it'll remove off some of it, which will show the orange. And then when we want to get these white areas, we want that black. So it burns all the way through to that highest power setting we have configured to show the white back for our image. As I did before in my last video, um, the settings and the contrast and the brightness are all exactly where I need them to be. So I don't, I'm not going to tweak them at all. I'm just going to go straight to download, download as a PNG and get that file saved off. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and hop over into Lightburn and I'll go over the settings I actually use for the engraving or etching on the canvas. 
Here in Lightburn, we'll start with a blank project. We'll do a control I to import an image. We're gonna pull in that Norton white tile version that we exported from imager.com just a moment ago. Go ahead and zoom in down to the settings for it. Uh, you can see the detail here. Uh, the image R version, the Norton white tile painted black, gives us a really high quality dither where you get a really nice contrast and brightness quality of the image. It ends up working really, really well for these sorts of images on both the white tile as well as a canvas once they're painted. The canvas took a lot more tweaking and dialing in to find the exact settings that gave me a good quality image. So it's gonna require that you go through and make sure you do the material testing to find out exactly what you want to get the look that you're going for whenever you try this out. You can use the settings I'll show you here in a moment from mine as a baseline to help you get started. Again, mine are for a five and a half watt blue diode laser, the Atomstack A5 M50 Pro. So if you're in a similar laser, you can probably start from this point, but you are gonna to need to do that material tester because it is very, very finicky. In this case, with a white canvas painted orange and then black, for the image R processed, you're gonna have it pass through. My speed was 1500 millimeters per minute with a maximum power of 9%. And I do have air assist on for these to kind of help clear out the dust from the paint as it's burning off. To give you an idea of how wildly these settings can vary as you're going through it, doing the exact same contrasted image with Jarvis was again 1500 millimeters per minute, but it was an 18% max power. So double the max power that it required for the pass through with the image R processed version. And then when I went as a grayscale, it was 13% max power. So the image mode you're using on these has a very, very profound effect on the settings you're gonna use. So you're, anytime you're changing that image mode from the Jarvis to the Stucky to a pass-through pre-processed or grayscale, you need to make sure you do the material tester with those exact settings, both for the overscanning, your line interval, everything like that, because tweaking any one of those is going to completely change the output and the outcome of your results. Again, for this one though, we're doing the pre-process, so we're gonna assign up that black on orange pass-through that I did which again is a 1500 millimeters per minute, 9% max power. The image itself is the full six inches. So if we do that one right now, it's going to be an hour and 40 minutes. That's not really necessary for this demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and shrink that down to a little bit under half. So we'll go up here and change it to 70 by 70. Uh, that drops us down to a 46 minute runtime on the laser. So I will go ahead and send this over to laser as always in my videos, I'll do a recording of it, uh, extremely sped up for anyone who just wants to see the process as it's running through. But then we'll come back at the end and I'll show the finished project and we'll talk through just a little bit more with it. One thing I do wanna call out before I started is just like with the tile version, you are burning off paint, which is gonna be re uh, releasing a lot of dust and fumes into the air make sure please that you have really good extraction for your air and your vented outside. That way you're not breathing in those paint fumes and that dust and putting yourself and your health at risk. With that, we'll go ahead and send it over and then I'll see you just here in a moment at the end with the final result. We'll go ahead and get started here just where we started. 
So this version here in the bottom left, this is the one you saw if you watched me going through and doing the configuration and the actual engraving process. This one is 1500 millimeters per minute at 9% max power with the air assist on and the pass through mode. You see we get a good amount of the orange detail coming through here. The black is nice and black. It didn't burn anything off. The white shows through exactly as we wanted it to. When I took the power down 1% and ran it again, so this is the exact same settings, still 1500 millimeters per minute, but at 8% max power, you can see a lot of the black still stayed on there. So it's not nearly as vibrant of an orange as we got at the 9% max power right here. And then I did another third one by raising the power 1%. So this is 1500 millimeters per minute, 10% max power. There's not an incredible difference between the 10% and the 9%, but when I put it here at the angle, you can see where the difference comes in. Like right along here where you see the white shining through a lot more. When we're on the 9% power, that stays orange. The white doesn't start poking through. So it's really good to view at almost any angle. I can still tweak it a little bit more, maybe using a darker color orange to make it a little bit more vibrant in the finished product. But again, I really like the way this turns out, that 1500 millimeters per minute, 9% max power. And one thing to note, big difference between like doing this on a canvas versus a tile, is that with a canvas, you're gonna get that texture. You're gonna get that canvas texture that shows through at any point, even on the black, where I didn't burn anything off, that texture still comes through from the canvas. So between this and the tile, it all comes down to your personal preference and how you like the way things look and what you kind of want to do for that finished product that you're either going to be selling or giving away as a gift. So I'd love to hear anyone's comments. If you have thoughts, questions, comments, anything about how I did this or ways I could do it better, I would love to hear it. I'm always looking for ways to improve, and I love hearing from the different people that watch these videos. So thank you all for your time, and good luck out there lasering.